Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a very nice quintic equation. Why do I call this very nice? You're gonna see in a little bit why I call it nice, but I'm also proud to say that because this is a problem that could be considered a homemade equation because I kind of came up with the idea and hopefully you'll like this idea. Let me know what you think at the end, okay? And I'm hoping that some of you came from my other channel, which is CyberMath, where I do algebra and number theory problems. If you come from CyberMath, please let us know in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to know. All right, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at this quintic. No, actually, hexic equation. It's not quintic. Do we have a hexic formula? No, we don't. Because we don't even have a quintic formula. And I, some people are, quintic equations are not solvable. No, some of them are solvable. You can use, bring radicals, so on and so forth. No, there is no quintic formula. Okay? Just accept the fact and let's move on. So this is a hexic equation. And as it is, can you guess what the solution is? No, I don't think so. It's not easy. But anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. But before we start, what is Z? Z is a complex number. What is a complex number? It is a number that can be written as A plus B I, where I is the square root of negative one and A and B are real numbers. So we have numbers that are not real and some of them are called complex numbers. Are there complex numbers or are there non-real numbers that are not complex? I don't know, maybe. You can come up with some number set. But if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over all the basics of complex numbers. If you see a need for any area, let me know. I know I haven't done any lecture videos on complex, com more complicated topics like complex integration, differentiation, limits, and so on and so forth. I'm planning to do those, but who knows when I'm going to be able to get to that. I'm kind of busy, you probably noticed. The change in schedule, you'll see a video every other day, pretty much. I would say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Sunday. Four days a week, that's almost every other day, with some repetition, Sunday, Monday, back to back, okay? Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. Obviously, there's no hexic formula. If you do know of a formula, there are some special hexics that can be solved, but not elementary methods. So, what are we gonna do then? And let me tell you something that I planned initially because I really want to share this with you. My initial plan for this type of video was the following. Z to the fifth minus Z to the fourth plus Z cubed minus Z squared plus Z minus one equals zero. But then I thought this would be too easy for some people, maybe for most people. And I know some people are going to be, oh, wait, this is too easy. Why do you? Well, it might still be hard for some people and that's perfectly fine, but I just you know, changed my mind and I'm like, okay, this will be a really good problem. Anyways, should we get started? Let's go. So instead of that, you get this interesting hexic equation. How do we solve it? Let me show you because the solution method, in my opinion, is pretty interesting. And for someone who didn't know what the original solution was, this could be pretty hard, but not impossible because this is a method that is used commonly in algebra. What is that method? So, as it is, this expression, as you can see, let's put one on the same side. So let's go ahead and subtract one, right? Look at the expression on the left-hand side. Is it factorable? I don't think so, right? You can make groups like these two and these two, but it's not gonna work nicely. Maybe I can try the following. I can go ahead and pair up differently, right? Maybe use these two together. It's gonna to give me z squared plus one, and these two will give me z to the fifth plus one. z to the fifth plus one is kind of factorable because I have z plus one as a factor, but z squared plus one is not factorable. Well, it is, but not in the way I want it. Maybe I can do the following. Can I just add maybe a one and then subtract two, in other words, how can I explain it? Plus one minus two gives us negative one, right? In other words, I just add two and then subtract two. Okay, that's probably a better way to explain it. I add two to this and then subtract two. But then I kind of put these two together. Did that work? 
I guess. Okay, I could probably do this. This becomes a 1 minus 2, yes. And then I could split this negative 2 into 1 minus, negative 1 minus 1. So here's my goal. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. So I can show you what I'm thinking about. So this is like a plus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So my goal is to use these numbers, like, for example, hmm, maybe I can pair up the z cubed with 1. Okay, what am I thinking? Okay, maybe use z to the 6th with 1, and then z to the 5th with plus 1. Okay, here's the problem. I end up with 7 terms, and I can't make groups like this, okay? So I don't think this is going to work, but at least I tried. Okay, this is a method that I just came up on the spot, and I didn't even know it was going to work or not, but looks like it's not going to work. Given the complexity of the problem, I guess that makes sense. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this the right way. There's only right way as far as I know, but if you can come up with another solution, please let us know. I'm, I really want to know. I'm curious. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with z to the 6th and z to the 5th. Have you noticed that there is no z to the 4th in this equation, but it's definitely missing? So I'm going to go ahead and subtract it, and then I'm going to add it. Make sense? Why didn't you add first? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, ready? And then I'll add the z cubed. I already have it, but I don't have a z squared. Notice those are good pointers, I think. We don't have z to the fourth, and we don't have z to the second. So those I'm going to add, but I'm going to subtract first, okay? That might help you visualize the solution, hopefully. So I'm going to subtract z squared and add z squared, and now this expression should be factorable. But how? That is the million dollar question, right? If you try to make groups of two, you're going to fail. You know why? Or maybe you're not. Who knows, right? But I think you are. Look, if you group these two together with z to the fifth, you're going to get z plus one, but from here you're getting z minus one. So I don't think that's going to work. Instead, we have to do groups of three. That is the trick with this problem, okay? Now, if you group these three, these three and those three, and that kind of explains why I subtract first? Because I want the third and the sixth terms to be minus, and the last one is definitely a minus already, so that works. Make sense? That's how the pattern works. So now, for my first group, z to the fourth is a common factor, z squared plus z minus one, and then z squared is a common factor, z squared plus z minus one. For the last pieces, one is a common factor. You see how everything falls apart. Beautiful. Z squared plus Z minus 1 is a common factor. And then the other common factor is going to, and the other factor is going to be Z to the fourth plus Z squared plus 1 equals 0. And guess what? The second factor is factorable. A factor that's factorable is an awesome factor. Now, let me just tell you that you can write this as Z squared plus 1 squared minus Z squared so that you can write it as a difference of two squares. And can I just write it? Allow me to write it so this video is not way too long, but you can definitely figure this out. And guess what? We have three factors. We have a hexic three quadratics. How nice it can get. Now we're going to be able to solve all of these. First one with the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, one minus four ac, that's going to be a five. Uh-oh, golden ratio pops up again. On my other channel, I made a video about this. Please check it out. And then the other one is going to be negative b. This time we're going to get b squared 1 minus 4, that's going to give us the square root of 3i, that is complex solution, and this one as well, but it's just going to be 1 plus minus root 3i over 2. This one kind of tells me that, uh oh, I wrote z instead of 1, I got excited. So the two solutions that are like four solutions tell me that there's probably a way to approach it from a trigonometric polar approach or perspective? I'm not exactly sure. Do I have solutions from Wolfram Alpha? Uh oh, I probably forgot to include them. I didn't. There's a graph. Yay, there are two real solutions. And here's all the solutions as you can see here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath. And bye-bye.